introduction and I really appreciate the applause. That was a much better reaction than when I told my parents I was doing comedy 10 years ago. Much, much better reaction. I remember telling them, it did not go great. Uh, I remember my daddy just looked at me and he just said, you're not using your real name, are you? And I said, no, no, I'm using yours. Uh, we get along real well. But it's not just my family that's been questioning the decision to be a comedian. People in my life in general that know me, Mm, not super impressed. Ran into my calculus teacher from high school. That did not go well. Uh, she's like, oh my gosh, Paul, what are you up to these days? You look great. I was like, I'm a comedian. She said, that's terrible. <laughs> she did not hold back. I was like, why? What is, what's wrong? What happened? She said, Paul, you don't understand. I am an educator. If that's what you're doing with your life, then I failed as your teacher. <laughs> and I tried to calm her down. Whoa, 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 whoa. You didn't fail. My parents failed long before you did. Don't... <laughs> Don't put that on yourself. But you didn't help as long as we're bringing it up. <laughs> the only thing worse than running into people that you know is running into people that you think that you know. That never ends well. I saw a woman from behind. I thought I knew who it was. So I ran up to her. I'm a flirt. Pinched her on the tush. It's what I do. Uh, turned out total stranger. She was pissed. Uh, she was like, what are you doing? I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were my best friend's mom. That was my mistake. I... We are very close. That didn't calm her down at all. A Little bit about me, I'm the oldest of four children. By a long shot, I was in high school while they were in diapers and potty training. I did a lot of babysitting, learned a lot of life skills, but I had to do a lot of things I wasn't ready to do, potty training included. Those, those oof, potty training is brutal. Those accidents, those days of discovery you're not quite ready for. I'll never forget it. Never forget it. My youngest brother calls me into the bell. He's like, Paul, come in quick. I was like, what's wrong, Connor? Are you okay? He's like, yeah. Guess what? I have two balls. I'm like, I know. I know. All boys do. That's kind of what makes us boys. And he was shocked. He's like, what? You have two balls too? And I said, yes. Yes, I do. And you can see his little toddler mind working on it. He's like, and dad? Dad does too. And I said, no. Mom took those when they got married. Uh, I got grounded a lot. Uh, <laughs> but I'm an adult now. I have to make adult decisions. It's time to grow up. So I decided it's time to start paying for a streaming service. It felt like the appropriate time in my life. My 30s. I didn't know which one to get. Netflix, Hulu, the big debate. Which one do you go with? I went with Hulu, because I am still getting Netflix free from my mom, so now I have them both. I've got, it's a good setup. I'm not getting rid of it, that's crazy. But I didn't know this, Hulu actually has two options. You can get Hulu with no commercials for $11.99, or for the rest of America, $7.99 with commercials, because I don't have $12 to watch Hulu once a month. So we're gonna do the commercial option. Oh, and get ready for the same three commercials for an entire month. You are in for it. I am never getting a Peloton. True story though, the first commercial when I got Hulu was a BMW 3 Series commercial, which is an impressive car, sure, but a really weird choice of commercial. Who can afford a BMW but not Hulu without commercials? <laughs> Who are you marketing to? The very next commercial was for Stephen Henniger's college. I was like, there's my target demographic. <laughs> there they are. Oh, what are we drinking tonight? Beer? Shots? What do we got? All of it. I know you guys are drinking. I'm not worried about that. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, man. People think comedians are big partiers, big drinkers. Uh, we're not. The only thing I want to do after a show is just go home and watch Hulu. That's just kind of like my favorite thing in the world. 
And I don't drink, it's just a personal decision. I don't care, it is what it is. But people lose their mind when they find out, especially fans. One night after a show, a fan was like, oh man, Paul, you were hilarious. Let's go to the bar, anything you want, drink's on me. And I was like, ah, it's your lucky day, water's cheap. Uh, <laughs> and he freaked out, he's like, what? You don't drink? You're a comedian. And I was like, whoa, easy. I thought Mormons were the only ones that judged. Let's calm it down. Oh, 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 oh. Turns out other people do it too. Crazy. And he tried to defend himself. He's like, you know what I mean. You're a comedian, you're up there, you're swearing on stage. I was like, okay, sure, but how is swearing and alcoholism related? How did you link those two up, my friend? And I called him out a little bit. I was like, yeah, I swear, I'll say a damn, a hell, something like that, but I don't go crazy, no F-bombs, nothing like that. He's like, I know. That's why I didn't offer you cocaine. <laughs> like, I was ready to party, and I was not. And I was not. <laughs> oh, man. Let's be... Okay, you like that one. Good. <laughs> should have started with cocaine. I, 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 the crowd demanded it. I should have, I should have reordered that. <laughs> But it's been 10 years, man. It's been a long time. I, I, love, I love doing comedy, but I've all, I'm trying to improve myself. Progression is key in life. And I spent a lot of my early years of comedy being angry, just wasting time being angry, misplaced anger. And there's just no point in that. I'm trying to be a better person, I'm trying to just throw away anger. And if you take something from this show, it's to never get angry. Always get even. It is so much more fun. <laughs> it is so much more fun. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. I was in LA doing comedy. And I got in my elevator and I pushed the sixth floor and I heard my favorite words ever. I heard, hey, hold the elevator, I love this. Because I get to feel like a good Samaritan and super strong for like 30 seconds. Like, I got this, I can hold these steel doors. Come on in, friend. And this guy's huffing and puffing. He's like, oh, thanks, man. Thanks for holding the elevator, I appreciate it. I was like, no problem, man. He sees that I'm on the sixth floor. He pushes the fifth floor and starts laughing at me. <laughs> Looks like you gotta go to the fifth floor now, bro. It was a really rude thing to say if someone just held the elevator for you. But I didn't get angry, what's the point? I just looked at him, pushed four, three, two, and said, what's the rush? <laughs> We're gonna be here a while. <laughs> oh. I'll let that sink in, it's okay. Some of you are gonna wanna do that in an elevator. It's a risky move, just know that in advance. But I am, uh, I am still single, like most comedians that are still funny. It's kind of a thing that we do. Uh, <laughs> I just don't understand women. I just can't figure them out. I will never understand how women can want fake nails, fake tans, fake hair extensions, fake breasts, but want me to buy them a real diamond ring. I don't, I can't, I can't wrap around that one. I can't. Just stay consistent, that's all I ask. That's all I ask. <laughs> Some of the men couldn't laugh at that one the way they wanted to, and that's okay. That's okay. Tweet it out later. <laughs> but women get jealous super easy, and you gotta be there as men to reassure them, to let them know that they're special, that you set them apart above everybody else. It's hard, but you have to do it, guys. You gotta do it. I'll never forget, I invited a woman over to my house. I was trying to impress her. I had a plate of homemade sugar cookies waiting for her, right? She walks in, first thing she says, what slut made you these? I was like, baby, baby, calm down. I don't remember her name, relax, calm down, I don't. <laughs> she did not like that. Uh, people always ask you, what's your type, Paul? Everyone has a type, I really don't have a type. Beauty comes in all shapes and sizes. I have been known to uh, favor the blondes. That has been a thing in my life, but I get Latin fever from time to time. Sure, sure. But like all fevers, it goes away. Uh, once I have to deal with her Latin mother, it just, oof, that, that'll cure you quick. Listen, if a Greek thinks you're too dramatic, you need to dial it back. That's all I'm gonna say. That one split the room and that's okay. That is okay. Oh, I did, uh, did get, I went through an ugly breakup uh, a little bit ago. It didn't go well. Got into a huge fight. She was screaming at me, never call me ever again. I was like, all right, fine. But I didn't know what to do with her phone number at that point. So I just wrote it on a for sale sign and I put it on my car. <laughs> Drove around the town for a couple of weeks with that written on there. <laughs> just to sweeten the deal, I put free or best offer. 
Long story short, she called me back. They always do. But she was not happy at all. Because guys just kept calling her up saying, hey, I hear you're just giving it away. <laughs> Which she was. Uh... <laughs> but when she called me, yeah, yeah, that person called. Uh... <laughs> But when she called me, did I pick up her phone call? No, I did not. I did not pick up her phone call. I ignored her phone call. We do that, right? People we don't want to talk to? Red button. We're not picking that up. But some people won't pick up on those hints that you don't want to talk to them. They'll call over and over and over again. So what do we all do? We think, okay, when can I call them, but they won't pick up their phone so we can get credit for a callback, but not actually talk to them. That, that's really the goal, right? The phone's ringing. You're just like, come on, voicemail. Come on, voicemail. One time, just give me that voicemail. Hello? Hey, Mom, how's it going? Hi, thank you so much. She hates that joke so much. <laughs> now, while I may be single, my roommates are moving on with their lives, finding the women of their dreams. Some faster than others, though. One of my roommates went a little faster than I thought he should. He got engaged after dating a woman for two weeks. That is the appropriate response. That's fast. Even for Utah, that's quick. That is, that is fast. I didn't even know he was dating anyone. He just came home. He's like, hey, I'm getting married. I was like, to who? I didn't know there was another person in your life. He's like, I know. We've only been dating two weeks. It's kind of fast. I was like, kind of fast? You realize there's a 50% chance you haven't seen her on her period yet, right? I just... That's what I think about. That's... Before you buy a house, you check the closet for monsters. Everybody does that. That's just a rule. Think it through, guy. <laughs> I like the second wave laughs. Those are sometimes my favorite, where the, the initial and then, oh, we get it again. <laughs> You weren't ready for a math joke. You weren't, but you got one just the same. But I do have roommates. Oh man, I am ready to be done with roommates. Uh, roommates just do things that get on your nerves and you just, you never get used to some of the things that they do. Like I will never get used to coming home and asking, why are you naked on the couch? You just never, you never get used to it. You want it to stop, but it never does. And when your roommates piss you off, there's only one thing to do, and that is to steal their food. You have, to, you have to get back at them some way. But you can't just steal their food. You have to steal their food and get away with it. This is tricky. There's a couple rules I've devised that help me successfully steal their food. Rule number one, never open or finish a package. They're gonna notice that, right? But sometimes they'll buy something and they won't open it for like a week. There's like a box of Oreos that's just sitting there and unopened and you just start losing your mind talking to the Oreos, soon, it's gonna be soon. I've already bought the milk. Finally, you're on the couch, you see him go in the kitchen, you're like, come on, man, break that seal. It's go time. And you hear it, you're like, yes. Finally, game on. Which leads me to rule number two, only eat enough so he can't prove you've eaten any. This is key. You gotta be careful here. Oreos are a perfect example. You're gonna eat his Oreos, take one off of each row, not three off of one column. That's a rookie mistake. He's gonna notice that space. Back them all up a little bit, who's gonna know? Rule number three, anything they write their name on, eat that first to teach him a lesson. Okay? I know my name is not Carson with a K. Thank you so much for addressing it. I promise if my name was Carson, I would have spelled it right. I promise you that. <laughs> and what are they thinking when they write their name on the food? Like, ah, who's gonna penetrate this written force field of security? <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> and come on, people, the line. Sometimes they'll draw the line on the orange juice or the milk to show where it's at. Now you're just showing me how much water I have to pour back in to get it back up to the line. <laughs> you're helping me. <laughs> They're probably listening to this thinking, ah, I knew I didn't buy skim milk. <laughs> I'm 
not going to fight it. <laughs> I did my job. <laughs> but I know some of you are thinking, oh man, Paul, you've given away your secrets. Now they're going to steal your food. No, they're not. Because I've learned all their food allergies. And now I just put all of that into my food. Does cookie dough ice cream taste the same with avocado? No. But at least I know it's all mine. Put a peanut in your gallon of milk, it's safe. It's safe. And if you ever come home and see an ambulance in the driveway, you already know what happened. You just keep driving. And put a new ad on Craigslist. I like this spot. This is... It's a very good spot. <laughs> I'm a big sports fan. I love sports. I'm a big football fan. Thank you. I expected that from that part of the room, of course. <laughs> big sports fan. Big Packers fan. Any other Packer fans in the crowd? Yeah. Of course you're... Oh, okay. Enough. Easy. This is Salt Lake City. This is no man's land. We cheer for whom we want. Easy with the booze. And I feel it appropriate at this moment to talk to the Steeler fan and say, hey, remember Super Bowl 45? Thank you. I deserve that. That's all right. <laughs> You're a good man. I opened the door. That one's on me. That's all right. <laughs> But I am a big, I'm a big Packers fan. I'm, I'm such a big Packers fan that I actually purchased stock in the team. You can do this. They are publicly owned, and I'm single, so I got $250 to blow. Let's do this, right? And people ask, Paul, why? Why would you do that? Why would you spend something? It doesn't increase in value. You can't sell it. I'll tell you why. So now I can say we during all the football games. That is a tremendous perk that I really enjoy. Because if you dare say we, and you don't have ownership, and you're not on the team, someone's calling you out. They're like, you can't say we, you're not on the team. On the team, bitch, I own the team. I can't do everything. That's an expensive joke. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. But did you see the tension? Just announcing my favorite team. I didn't talk crap on anyone's team, I just said my favorite team, and things got heated real, real quick. I take a lot of crap for being a Packers fan. All my friends, none of, no one else is Packer fans, it's just me, and they always constantly give me crap. Even my gay friends hate them, which I find just a little ironic uh, that they hate them so much. They want me to support them being Packer fans. I feel like it's a two-way street. I don't... Well, that's the one. Okay, that's the one. That's the one you've been waiting for. <laughs> but one of my gay friends, it, oh, it's so infuriating. Every week he will text me, go 49ers, just all the time. It doesn't matter who the Packers are playing, just constantly sends me that message. It drives me insane. But I don't get mad at him. I'm trying to be better. And I ask him, hey, why are you sending me this message? Why? He's like, because I know that you don't like them. <laughs> okay, fine. So now I send him a message every week that says, go vaginas. Uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan, a big fan. He set the rules, I'm just playing his, I'm playing his game now. I'll let that one soak in for a sec. You weren't ready and that's okay. She was. Uh, but I do love sports, I'm a big sports guy. I love sports because it's the only time men get to be experts in the relationship. Because uh, women know everything, but sometimes a woman will ask you a question about sports and we feel important for like two seconds. We feel super good. He is gonna get that whistle on this show. He's gonna get that whistle on. He's gonna let you know. I wish I had like a dog on here or something. We could get commands going. But I was watching a football game with a girl, and she was being a good sport about it, but she started having some questions. About halfway through the game, she's like, hey, what's that yellow line there for? And how do they move it so fast? And why hasn't anyone tripped over it? 
And I just looked at her and I said, I love you. Now play with my keys. It'll be over soon. I don't know. We transcended the questions there. We transcended sports. I tell you, if I do end up marrying a woman that's a sports fan, I'm in trouble, because I will, at that point, contribute nothing intellectually to that relationship. <laughs> that's all I have. But men even invented sports to get away from their wives. They did. That was kind of how golf got invented. A bunch of guys were sitting around like, oh man, she's making a list. We're gonna be all weekend doing chores. We gotta do something. We need to invent a sport that takes at least six hours. Okay, well, what are we gonna do? I don't know, it'll be outside. We'll just, we'll figure it out. We'll find holes and balls and sticks. We'll do something. We'll figure it out for six hours. Well, that doesn't sound like very fun. I mean, we're gonna be out in the forest for six hours? That sounds like a lot of work. Don't worry, we'll get little cars to drive around in. Like, we won't, we won't actually get in shape or do anything physical. It'll be a good time, I promise. Okay, cool. Well, what if it's not a good time? Don't worry, it'll be a good time. We'll make it so you can drink and smoke while you play. Don't worry about it. We're gonna be fine. Yeah. Well, I don't know, man. That seems really cool. What if our wives wanna come? What if they wanna play with us? No, 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 we gotta, we'll figure something out. Let's make a rule where you're not allowed to talk while you play. Perfect. Awesome, yeah. No woman will ever wanna play this game. Holy cow, we've invented the perfect sport. What are we gonna call it? Let's call it golf. What does that stand for? Glimpse of a little freedom. That's it. That's all, that's all it is. Just facts. But I love, I love golf. Golf is my favorite sport to watch on TV because I love watching TV alone. Oh, it's just the best. Only a few of you get that one and that's okay. That is fine with me. I loved playing golf growing up as well because it was the only time growing up I was allowed to swear. Oh, oh, that's huge for a kid. You're never allowed to swear. I was playing golf with my dad one day and I hit a terrible shot. I was like, damn it! And my dad just looked at me and said, yes. You can say those words here. Tis a safe space. And I was like, I like golf. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I needed to get a new car, though. I uh, had a Corolla for a decade. That felt like enough. That felt like enough. <laughs> the summers were fine, but the winters were tricky. Winters in a Corolla, not great, because they like to do their best impression of Tokyo Drift. And uh, I don't want to be in that movie, I just want to stay on the road and... I needed all-wheel drive for the winners. I wanted to be able to drive in bad weather. So I went to the, uh, the shiny new car dealership, the Kia dealership, if you've ever been there. That's not a joke, that's a price range, but thank you. Uh, and I went and I asked the salesman, I saw the Kia Optima, that's the car that I want. I was like, hey man, do you have any Kia Optimas with all-wheel drive? He's like, nah, nah, we don't have any of those. No one would buy it, there's no demand. I said, that's weird, because if you had one, I'd buy it tonight. And he looked at me and said, I know, a lot of people would. <laughs> Do you go to Stephen Henniger's college? What just happened? What, what just happened? One of us is stupid. Something happened. <laughs> but you know salesmen, they'll spin anything. They'll spin anything. Oh man, you don't need all-wheel drive. You don't need all-wheel drive. Kia Optimas have headrests with anti-whiplash technology. <laughs> oh my gosh, do you mean it? Isn't that what all headrests do? What are you talking about? You can't just throw technology at the end of things to impress people. That's not how it works. What else do you have? Tires with air retaining technology? Tell me more. <laughs> and side note, if someone asks about the safety of your vehicle and the immediate thing you say is that the headrests are good, what are you saying? You are gonna crash. Just know that uh, a crash is coming, but when you crash, we're taking care of you. Don't worry. <laughs> it's not a good feature there. So I didn't do uh, the Kia Optima. I decided to get a Jeep. That's the car that I got. I don't think much of it, but my friends, oh man, they lose their minds when they see my Jeep. They're just like, oh man, Paul, your Jeep is sick. You must be waist deep in girls. I'm not. Uh, I'm not waist deep. I am not knee deep. I'd like to be toe deep. That would be uh, a really good depth. But I don't understand why my friends think that my Jeep is helping me get women. I don't understand. I don't know a lot about women. I do know this. You do not shout to them from your vehicle. They do not like that. Do not do that. 
So what am I supposed to do? Do I just carry a picture of my Jeep in case I run into one on the street? Just, hey, my name's Paul. This is what I drive. You know what to do. It's time. I don't think that's gonna work. Do I just see like a group of people? I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start shouting out features about my Jeep. I can tow 7,200 pounds and get 30 to the gallon. Do you know who's impressed by that? Other men. They are so jazzed. Oh man, Paul, road trip. And I'm just like, I got the wrong car. I got the wrong car. I should have gotten a Jetta. <laughs> I will tell you this though. I did not put bumper stickers on my car. I didn't do that. I don't like bumper stickers. I'm just gonna say a statement. I don't care if you agree with me or not. If your opinion has ever been changed by a bumper sticker, you're stupid. I'm just saying it. I'm sorry. I don't understand what's happened with our society and bumper stickers. I don't get it. How does that even work? Is that like how Trump got elected? Is like people getting their minds changed by the Trump bumper sticker? People are all driving, gonna vote for Hillary and they just see the Trump bumper sticker like, oh man, woo, says his name and the year of the election, woo. That's what we need in office. That's efficient. That is good stuff. <laughs> or what is it? Some bigot just driving down the highway. I hate all religions that aren't mine. Religions are stupid and dumb and wrong. And what's, what's that say? Co, coexist <laughs> with religious symbols, all of them working together in perfect harmony. <laughs> You've done it. <laughs> I'm a changed man. <laughs> Thank you, Coexist Bumper Sticker, thank you. I don't think that's happening, ever. Here's what I don't understand. I don't understand, why are you choosing to share your private opinion in a public space where there's so much anger already, right? And more importantly, sharing your personal opinion with the person driving directly behind you who probably already hates your guts before they knew how much you loved hiking. That, that just doesn't feel like a smart time to be sharing said opinions, right? I get road wage a lot, and it's safe to say that I will judge a driver based on their bumper stickers. You, am I the only one that does that? Like you're reading, what does that say? Teach peace? I don't know about peace, but someone needs to teach you to get to the right hand lane so we can go faster than this speed limit. In the I don't know about peace, but I'm about to teach you how to file an insurance claim in a second. I'm gonna teach you something. The best things in life aren't things. No, the best thing in life is being on time for work and not stuck behind some Nancy who can't make a left hand turn. <laughs> Draw a hand. <laughs> Love animals, don't eat them. Well, I was gonna have a salad for lunch, but you cut me off and now I'm killing something with a pulse. I promise you that. I promise you that. <laughs> it, get, it, it gets heated. <laughs> Sometimes you'll see a car with like 40 bumper stickers. They love, value, and cherish everything except the resale value of their car. <laughs> but you knew that, they bought a Saturn. You were well aware. You... <laughs> uh, I love road trips though. I love road trips, open road, snacks, all that great stuff. But like any man, I have one goal when it comes to road trips. And that is to beat the Google Maps estimated time of arrival. That, that is my quest. We take that as a personal challenge and we're up for it, okay? No cruise control on this trip. You all thank me when we arrive 13 minutes early. But you can kiss that goal goodbye if you get caught behind a semi-truck. Oh, that is, that is a death trap. The only thing worse than getting caught behind a semi-truck is getting caught behind a semi-truck that is trying to pass another semi-truck. <laughs> Have you seen this phenomenon? What is happening on the highway? You're paid to be here. What is the rush? Is there like a rest stop with one shower and you're fighting it out? What's going on? <laughs> I don't understand. And when, when you see this, your mind just goes insane. You start asking rhetorical questions. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> what if they were? What if this is an elaborate prank that they've just had for decades? <laughs> All right, Raheem, it looks like I see a white Jeep coming up pretty fast behind us. You're doing great at 66 miles an hour. I'm gonna get into the left-hand lane going 67 up this hill. I have no chance of passing you on. We're gonna have some fun. Shh. Oh, great, I cannot wait. We're going to have you say, screw it. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. Shh, 10 4 Raheem, and if we can get our outer wheels to the edge of the road, let's kick up some rocks, give them something to remember us by. 
there's gonna be a good time with that windshield. Oh my gosh, and as you're in this hell on earth, just dodging rocks and freaking out, you see that stupid number that's at the back of the semi. How's my driving? Oh, I'm gonna tell them how he's driving. When has that phone number ever helped anyone? You call the number, you would not believe what truck 572 is doing right now. This is insane. You, you got it, sir, we're gonna help you out. Blow up the truck. Like that's, that's not gonna happen. It's you and the truck, you're in this together. And finally, like 30 minutes later, they get over back into the right-hand lane like nothing's happened. And one panic attack, two chips in your windshield later, you finally see the open road, you kick it down a gear, you give them something to remember you by. And right as you see that daylight, your girlfriend from Shotgun's like, can we stop? I really need to pee. I really... Is this a bad time? Can we stop? Is this a bad time? Did you not just see what happened? I can't stop now. I stop now. They're gonna get in front of us again. I'm never gonna get out of here. Like I said, I love road trips. Uh, like any well-rounded single man, I love video games too. I am a, I'm a big video game fan. Yeah. I don't know if I want applause for that at this point, uh, but I appreciate the gesture. <laughs> but while I do love video games, it is wreaking havoc on my language. Just, ooh, it's bad. It gets descriptive in a hurry with me. And it's not the games you're thinking, Call of Duty, Gears of War. No, Mario Kart needs to, ooh. Mario Kart and me have a very long history and it's not good. That game is rigged, and I'm tired of playing its game. I'm tired of it. Every time I'm in first place, every other computer player gets a blue shell within two seconds and boosts my ass back to the end of the line. But when I need a blue shell, what do I get? Three green shells. Don't fire them all off at once. Best of luck to you, kiddo. No! And those computer players, I can't, I can't play against the computer. I can't. There's no nice way of saying it. Princess Peach is a bitch. There. Oh my gosh. I wish we'd never saved her. I wish Bowser still had her, and I just, oh. Because she does things, she does a little something different that none of the other characters do. If she hits you with that blue shell, she will turn and giggle as she passes you. She'll just be like, ah, and I'm like, oh, it's on. Oh, oh, I just, I'm getting heated just thinking about it. And I will tell you this, do not play Mario Kart against your girlfriend or anyone in your life that you care about, because it will end poorly, okay? If you play against your girlfriend, that's called breakup mode. Just be ready for it, because if there's a soft spot or a crack in your relationship, it will be exposed on Rainbow Road. Just be warned, you are gonna say things you can't take back. You gotta play together and unite your hatred against the computer. It's the only way to survive. Oh man, but video games, I like video games for one very simple reason. It helps protect me in my life. Uh, case in point, my friends wanted to go base jumping. They're like, hey, let's go base jumping. I was like, nah, I'm not going base jumping. They're like, why not? I'm like, because I've never gone, and I died three times in Call of Duty before I got it right. Uh, I don't like those odds, okay? That's just a nice safety tip in life. Before you do something in your real life, do it in a video game first. Just see how it goes, okay? Because sure, YOLO, fine, but yo do too, okay? You're going to live once, you're going to die once. Make sure it counts, okay? Thanks to video games, I don't base jump. I don't scuba dive. I'm not a street fighter in any capacity. I'm never joining the military. Uh, trust me, you don't want me. Uh, and I will never go to a strip club, ever. Never in my life. I played Grand Theft Auto, okay? You go into a strip club, you're dead nine times out of 10. That nah, is not good odds, okay? You will not see me in a strip club with anything less than SWAT gear and an RPG, okay? I'm too scared of death. And for some reason, I'm worried my parents will be in there. Like, does everyone, like, you don't have that, that weird fear that like, you don't want to go in because you'll see someone that you know, and like, oh my gosh, my neighbor is working here. 20, 20. But I don't just love video games, I love movies too. I'm a big movie goer. I do have one problem with movie theaters. Here's the thing I don't understand. My favorite movie that I ever saw was The Dark Knight. I went like four times, it was amazing, I loved it. 
the worst movie I ever saw in the movie theater was Jack and Jill. Because uh, we learned Adam Sandler doesn't need two roles the hard way. <laughs> Here's my question. Why in the world did those two movies cost exactly the same price? This is America, where we pay more for better food, clothes, and strippers. That's all it's always been. You pay more for quality. That's this country. How did movies just get a free pass? Doesn't matter how good or crappy it is, you're paying the same price. No, we need to establish a system where we pay for the quality of movie associated with the price of the ticket. Anything with Brad Pitt, $10, sure. Anything with Nicolas Cage, $2.50. Tyler Perry movies are free with the purchase of a soda. I'm just saying. We need a system. Something's got to change. I don't do horror movies, though. I can't do horror movies. Not because they're scary. They're too unrealistic now. We've lost all the good plots. It's over. I just I can't get on board with them. The one that really did it in for me was the latest Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. That one... I couldn't do it. Look, I get it. He's got someone else's face on as a mask. That's scary. Sure. He's running around, sawing people in half. Fine. But there is a scene in the latest one of those movies where he runs around terrorizing the Texas State Fair. I call BS on that, okay? <laughs> Everyone in Texas has a gun. There is, there is no way he's making it out of this fair. They'd be like, is that a guy with a fake face? Shh, shh, finally. <laughs> Roll credits, end of franchise. That's the end. Just put him in a more believable place. Just put him in the Oregon State Fair. Sure, sure, sure. He will run around for days. Not a problem. They probably wouldn't even run away. They'd just stand there screaming, ah, he's entitled to his opinion. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know how to get you guys to go as long as her or her to cut it short. Something's gotta change. We gotta even this thing out. Oh, we got a snort. That, now I know I'm cooking. Now I know I'm cooking. Halfway through, we got the first snort. I like it. But I will tell you this. I do not take the ladies to the movies on a first date. I don't, I don't do it. I don't find it appropriate. I do wanna get to know them more. And honestly, it's too much pressure for a first date, okay? I can't handle it. And while we're talking about it, dinner was expensive enough. I don't know what's going on. And that's not a knock on you, ladies. What the hell happened to popcorn prices? What are we doing in the movie theaters? $8 for a large popcorn? As an American consumer, you see that, no, no, no. No, 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 I'm not paying that. What's the small? Give me the small. Seven seventy-five. Who? Who is in charge of this pricing structure? What is happening here? But what do they say to get you to buy the large? What do they say? Free refill. You all are families that are cost efficient, and I like it. Free refill. Let's talk about this free refill. Who has to go get this free refill? Are you going to bring it to me, or do I have to get up halfway through this $19 3D movie? Sorry. Sorry to put my butt in your face. You're innocent in this, but it's a free refill. I got to go. I got to go. They got to back up there. They see, they're never happy to see the second time. Like, how did he eat all that popcorn? <laughs> they flip over the tub. They draw that huge Sharpie X on the bottom. In case I want to sneak back for a third. <laughs> you caught me, movie theater, and my pro to steal your popcorn. <laughs> they always ask the same stupid question. Do you want butter with that? For $8, I want butter, M&Ms, nacho cheese, lower it up. <laughs> I got to go get it again. Sorry, I know, I know, I'm back. Do you want some? There's cheese on it. Okay. <laughs> Sit down with your first date. What did I miss? Why are we on a beach? What happened? Oh, that sounds like a blast. And while we're talking about it, free refill. That feels like a family situation. I am on a first date. There is just two of us. How much popcorn could I possibly eat? I'm on a first date. I'm trying to show her I have self-control and I'm a normal human being. She's not ready to see how much popcorn I put, can put away. This is not the time. So no, no thank you to the free refill. But what do we do? <laughs> but what do we do when the free refill is an option? We try to eat the entire first bucket before the movie even starts. Have you been there? You're just shoveling in. Hurry, put in your purse. <laughs> Go back, the previews are almost over, hurry. Your mom's building you a napkin for it in your pants. 
There's so much butter, it seeps through. You look like you pissed yourself. All in the name of saving. So no thank you. Another reason that I won't do uh, the movies on a first date is the armrests. How do you make that call on a first date? That's a lot of pressure. Like, do we put it up? Do we put it down? Do I like her? Does she like me? Is this too forward? Is it not forward enough? I'm not ready for these questions. And I'm a gentleman, so I'll always ask, do you want it up? Should we put it up? Down? Okay, down. Down's fine. You should. Sure, let's put it down. Worst $30 ever. You know what I mean? Because ladies don't even know what we're saying when we want the armrest up. They're just thinking, oh great, somewhere to put my Diet Coke. And we're just thinking, thou shall not pass. <laughs> Message received, okay? It's kind of cute sometimes though. Out of the corner of my eye, they'll get a little fidgety about halfway through the movie, like, why hasn't he made a move yet? Huh? Got the hair, I got the makeup, I laughed at the stupid comedian jokes. Why hasn't he made a move? It's because of the armrest, ladies. You're too busy playing a game with us. You missed out. <laughs> but I get it. I know what's in ladies' heads. I get it. They're, they're classy. I don't just give it away. I get it. You're classy. I know you're classy. That's why I brought you to the movies. <laughs> if we thought that any action was going to happen at all, we'd have gone straight to Redbox and back to my place. Okay? I got a minky couture and a scentsy candle at the ready. I am ready. That is the entire business model of Redbox, of giving you the ability to have movies available for just one night rental. Why do you think it's called Redbox? Pinkbox would have been too obvious. <laughs> listen, listen. Some jokes just write themselves, okay? I am just a vessel, okay? <laughs> I know what you're thinking, man, this guy is hilarious. He must do this all the time. <laughs> Not true. Uh, I have a day job, I've always had a day job. Some better than others. I've had some really tough ones. I, was a, I waited tables for four years. While I was in college, I roofed for a, a year. That took 10 years off my life. That was <laughs> oh, brutal. But the worst day job that I ever had, I was, oof, I was a customer service representative for a health insurance company. Oh, yeah. You guys get really upset when your claims don't get paid. Uh, and I got to hear it every single day. It's a tough job, it's a tough job, but we had some fun while we were there. Uh, we got Viagra training, which apparently you had a lot of questions and I needed to be there to answer them. You know what I'm talking about. He just raised his hand, he just accepted it. No, that's my kind of front row. That is a front row. He's raising his hand, she's laughing. It's just a good time up here. But it's funny though, so when we got, the, we got Viagra training and it was taught by just a wonderful, sweet young lady, which I found just oop, a little ironic that she was doing the training. She had no idea what she was talking about. She was so bad at the training, she didn't even know how to pronounce it. She kept calling it Vigera through the whole thing. <laughs> She was like, Vigera is gonna be covered for this and Vigera is not covered for that. And I, I finally had to correct her. I was like, hey, just so you know, that's actually pronounced Viagra. She got so embarrassed. She's like, well, how am I supposed to know? I don't take it. And I panicked, whoa, I don't take it either. Hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. I don't take it, but I can still read. Those two haven't been linked yet, okay? I know if I do have a boner, I can't read, but that is completely unrelated. That is, that is a different situation. <laughs> completely, completely unrelated. <laughs> and I give her a hard time, I give her a hard time, but I'm no better. I was an idiot. I did, I said stupid stuff all the time. I'll never forget it. The worst phone call of my life. Uh, a lady called in. Very simple request. She's like, hey, I just would like to know what my benefits are for a pap smear. And I was like, okay, not a problem. I just want to make sure I document this correctly. Is this going to be for you or your husband? <laughs> and then I just hung up while she laughed. <laughs> that, did not, that did not go well. They told me that I just need to sound knowledgeable on the phone. That's a lie. <laughs> you need to be knowledgeable on the phone. That is, that is much more important. <laughs> 
So normally when I do stand-up comedy, I don't like to tell people what's true, what's fake, what I make up. It's like my creative outlet. But this next story is 100% true. It's a true story of my life, and I wish every day that it wasn't. Um, <laughs> but it's one of my favorite stories, and I want to do it, of course, for you guys. Uh, I got sent to my HR department while I worked there. And I know what you're thinking. That sounds about right. Uh, <laughs> And I had never been. I'd never been to the HR department before. I didn't know what to expect. It's terrifying, right? HR departments are scary because they have two jobs at the HR department. Number one, talk about what you did wrong and also find out other things that they don't know about, right? And number two, make you feel like the worst person on earth for doing what you did. So when they call me down, my mind's racing. I don't know what this is about. And they say, do, we kn do you know why we called you down here? And I said, is this about the murder? I just, I wanted to throw them off. Right? <laughs> He's like, no, sit down. <laughs> and so they start asking questions. They're just probing. Question number one, have you ever struck another employee with your hand or a blunt object such as a stapler? <laughs> what kind of a vague, weird question is that? It's not a weird question because it couldn't happen, but who gets away with that stuff? Right, you're like, hey, Mike, this potluck sign up sucks, okay? Get it together. <laughs> See you at lunch. <laughs> no, if you strike another employee, they escort you off the premises. They don't just wait to settle it in HR the next week. So I was just like, uh, no, I have not struck another employee. He's like, okay, cool. Question number two, have you ever engaged in sexual misconduct in the office, such as kissing, groping, or touching a woman's breasts? To which I asked, does your daughter work here? I just wanted to be sure, I just... <laughs> covering my bases. But again, that's a super weird question. That is a weird question. I'm like, no, no. Is our, our company's doing that to boost morale? Is that, is, is, what, what is happening here? Are women walking up to men just slapping them on the ass like, let's get them. And we're just turning around saying, hey, Janine, you're doing great work. <laughs> you're looking perky, you're looking firm. Let's have a great Monday. <laughs> I flip, I flip. Sometimes when the mood strikes. <laughs> Try it, it's fun. <laughs> so I answer no, of course, we're 0 for 2. And then question number three, he says, have you ever made any off-color jokes in the office about another employee's sexual orientation? Now we're getting more specific. And some lights are starting to go off. <laughs> And I actually said, yeah, I, I, I might have I might have done this. Like, okay, let's talk about it. Like he doesn't already know. <laughs> and this is what happened. This is the truth. This is what happened. There were two gay employees on my team uh, that hated each other's guts. They would fight all the time. And this one gay employee was just going in on the other gay employee one day while he was out. He's like, I hate this guy, his work ethic, his shirts, his hair. I can't take it anymore. And all I said was like, so he's not your type? I just want to make sure. Is it... <laughs> I wanted to light him up. I, I just wanted to know if like, it was like a done deal. And he was super pissed. He was super pissed. And so he wanted to send me to HR for making a, a bad joke in the office. I was just goofing around. I felt bad. And so I told him, he's like, okay, yeah, that's what we heard. And I was like, okay. And I figured I'd say sorry, maybe take some sensitivity training, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> that was not a joke. That was a sincere gesture. <laughs> but no, 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 this interview was not over. <laughs> Here comes question number four, and it's a doozy. <laughs> he asks me, okay, Paul, one more question. Have you ever taken your fingers and put them into the hole of a woman's ripped pants? <laughs> what? <laughs> question four is very different from questions one and two. Very different. It's specific. It is very specific. And I jumped back in my chair. I was like, no, what? No, I would never. Are you insane? You know what Detective HR hits me with? Are you sure? <laughs> like, I'm gonna forget that? Are you out of your mind? You know what? I wish I would have done all of that stuff. I would be a legend in that office. <laughs> they would tell stories about me from years to come. Do you remember when Paul was on ecstasy? It was amazing. <laughs> Does he think someone slipped me a roofie and I just went on some stapler slapping, boob grabbing whole adventure time? What? No! And I kept telling this guy, no, he kept, he kept probing because 
he, I was just like, dude, this is so weird. Do you want to know what happened? This is what happened. So the employee that sent me to HR was like, mm, that joke's not enough to get him in any real trouble. So he made up a story that a woman ripped her pants. I saw it happen. I was like, hey, tweedly deedly deedly doo. <laughs> Can you imagine what her interview was like? Cause you know she got one. <laughs> I can't make, I'm not that creative. I would never make that up. I could never make that up in a million years. So obviously charges were dropped cause it didn't happen. And I went back to work on Monday. That was super awkward. And people were like, Paul, what did you do? What did you say to this employee that made up this terrible story to try and get you fired? I didn't say a word. I don't want to go back to HR. I just walked up to him, looked him dead in the face. And slapped him with a steak. <laughs> now I can answer yes to question one. I'm ready. That was the weirdest day of my life. <laughs> it's the life that I live. <laughs> Been trying to get in shape. Uh, I've been trying to, trying to get in shape. That's about as far as I've gotten with that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, I did. I have, I have lost, uh, I've lost about 30 pounds. I've been working hard doing, doing what I should. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Diet, exercise, diet and exercise. And I got to tell you, seasonal depression is kind of cool. It has some perks that people don't want to address. It's, it's very nice. Uh, it, no fads that work. I'm not, a, I can't get it. I've tried the fads. They don't work. P90X doesn't work, not because it's fake, but because it's literally impossible. I have tried P90X, it doesn't work. I can't finish those workouts. I have never been so sore in my entire life. You know that really crippling soreness where you can't laugh, you can't walk? That was nothing. I was so sore I couldn't push out my own poop. Anyone else? Have you, have you been there before? You're just on the toilet like, come on gravity, just this one time. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, it's everywhere. Oh, I can't move. Oh. Oh. It did wonders for the diet. Wonders for the diet. People were like, Paul, let's go to five guys. Not a chance. They're like, ah, oh, it's not that many calories. I'm like, no, it's just not worth it coming out. <laughs> Nothing is anymore. And it's a lot harder for me to, to eat right because of my condition. Uh, and no... I'm not gluten intolerant, if that's what you're thinking. If you have that, think again, okay? I have a real disease, okay? I have IBS. You guys know what that is? Do you know what IBS is? What is that? Irritable bowel syndrome with a slight smile. She gets it, she knows. <laughs> I, I, do, I do have IBS, it's not fun. They call it IBSD, and uh, shocker, the D is for diarrhea. I don't know why they felt they needed to do that. They don't do that with other diseases. They don't just throw the worst symptom in there. Hey, what do you have? I have EDF. What's that? Erectile dysfunction with flaccidness. I just want you to know exactly what's happening to my body. Just leave, leave the D out of it, okay? IBS is bad enough, okay? And I tell you, I'm not a jealous person. I don't, I don't get jealous. Live your life. Have what you like in life. Just do it for you. But I will tell you, my coworker told me a story that brought a tear literally to my eye. He told me his morning routine was waking up, grabbing his coffee, having breakfast while watching Sports Center. He would go up, drop his morning deuce, take a shower, and he was done with pooping for the day. Oh, the jealousy that just erupted from my heart. The greenness of my envy knows no bounds that this man is so regular that he knows when it's gonna happen, can double clean in the shower and go into the world with confidence that no mistakes are gonna be made is a joy that I will never know. I panic anytime I go to a sporting event in case lightning strikes and I gotta wait in the line. I don't have time for any lines and trust me, none of you wanna be in this line as well, okay? I'm wearing gym shorts. It's not gonna be good for anyone. IBS is brutal, man. It is the worst. The problem with IBS is it's just so frustrating because people that are gluten intolerant are like, oh, Paul, come on. You, you don't know what we go through. We can't have pasta or waffles or happiness or muffins or pizza. Shut up, okay? Do you know what people with IBS can't have? Do you? Do you? No, because nobody knows, okay? 
every day is just a game of digestion roulette, and there's a little goblin in my stomach with a lever, then he gets to decide whether I absorb nutrients or turn my colon into a water slide. And that's as nice as I can say it. People say I have trust issues. Yeah, I've got trust issues. I haven't trusted a fart since 2005. I wish these were jokes. Uh, <laughs> but the IBS, man, the IBS is brutal. You never know when it's gonna strike. Like I'll have pizza and wings, no problem, no big deal. But I'll have nachos and the, uh, the goblin gets pissed. He's like, get this out of here. <laughs> oh. And you're like, Paul, just eat healthy, simple solution. You don't think I've tried that? Grilled chicken, balsamic vinaigrette. Give me some real food. <laughs> Sorry you missed your flight. Oh, a couple people have been delayed as well. <laughs> Airports are a bad time. <laughs> and even if I eat something that pleases my stomach, that's no guarantee for the future. I'll never forget, I was at a restaurant, I had lasagna, and it pleased the goblin. It was like the most settling feeling in the world, so I ordered another one for lunch the next day. Huge mistake! The goblin was like, what is this? Mix it up, idiot. <laughs> oh, and just to be clear, that's not a sound effect, that's the sound, okay? That is... I've heard it many times. But the goblin makes dating hard, man. It makes it way hard. Because you ladies have great ideas, and I can't do them most of the time. Like, they'll be like, hey, Paul, let's go grab some lunch and then go for a hike. Ooh, lunch sounds great, but let's not plan an activity so far from bathrooms. Let's, <laughs> let's stay closer to home. Let's stay closer to home. Dinner and a movie? Sure, dinner sounds great, but let's not pre-order those movie tickets, okay? because the goblin's gonna decide whether we go to the movies or I watch Netflix in the bathroom. That is a fork in the road. That is a decision that needs to be made. Am I the only one that's actually stalked a public bathroom? Do you know what I mean? Where you walk in, see somebody else walk straight the hell back out? Ooh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. They're not ready for what they're gonna hear. They're not ready. And neither am I. Neither am I. You start filling for time, you start texting people. I start texting my exes, I always loved you. I'm so sorry for everything, oh my gosh. <laughs> IBS makes you vulnerable, it does. <laughs> Finally they leave, you sprint back in. You get, you know, ready. You're ready to unleash the beast, as they say. And someone else walks into the bathroom. Oh my gosh, why? <laughs> start talking the ceiling, was that necessary? Why are you doing this to me? And you think you can hold it, but you can't. and you just break porcelain. Do you know what I mean? You, you wanted to fire off that Death Star in peace and it didn't happen. So bad that the tiles just verberate throughout the entire room, just <laughs> We all think the same stupid thing. Maybe he didn't hear that. Maybe he didn't hear. Right when you think that, they sprint out of the bathroom. They didn't even zip up or wash their hands, gross. And you're all thinking, freaking out, oh man, he's out in the Panda Express telling everyone about this. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I can't leave now. He knows what my shoes look like. <laughs> and that was the first joke that I ever wrote back in 2009 that ever actually got a laugh. That, there it is, that is it. It was April 2009, I was uh, trying to write jokes unsuccessfully, and I went to a Panda Express, fully intending to write jokes. I had a bunch of ideas, and lightning struck. Uh, and I literally was just sitting in the stall in the most pain of my life, and just was like, comedy. <laughs> oh, and it's been a big road, it's been a long road, man, and it means a lot to me that you guys are here. It's been 10 years, I've had a lot of, a lot of small shows, crappy shows, good shows, great shows, but it means the world to me that after 10 years and all that work, we can sell out a room and everyone can have a good time, and I just want to thank you all so much for coming out. It's been so much fun. You guys are awesome. Yeah. To know that 10 years ago, I was doing comedy in an Applebee's in front of no one that wanted to see me, to this, 
is amazing. And there are people in this room tonight that were at that Applebee's and they have stuck with me and you guys are awesome. You know who you are. Thank you so much. The only reason this sold out is not because of me. It didn't sell out because of me. It sold out because people support me like you guys and you guys are awesome and you deserve the best and thank you so much for being here still tonight. You guys are awesome. We're not done. I'm just saying thank you. You guys are awesome. Me? You have been there all night, and I like it. <laughs> Dating is weird. Uh, I've done a lot of it. Some of it good, some of it bad. I got broken up with over text message once. That was a nice low point. It wasn't so much rude as it was confusing to me, honestly. I kissed her goodnight. Like a gentleman in the morning, I woke up to, hey, we have to break up. My ex showed up last night, and I messed up which is a confusing text to wake up to. Like, do cheaters not sleep? What happened? I don't understand. <laughs> and I'm an idiot, so I text her back, well, did you kiss him, mess up, or did you sleep with him, mess up? Well, I wanna know where we're at in the book of mess ups. What happened, right? And she just texts me back, both, sorry. <laughs> which was unnecessary, right, okay? If you slept with a guy, kissing's implied. I don't need to know a play-by-play -play <laughs> of everything that happened, okay? It's not like he knocked on the door, she opened it, she's like, no, 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 these lips are for Paul, but the vagina's free again. <laughs> I doubt that's how it went. But I'd be impressed if it did. That would be a story for the grandkids <laughs> that we will never have. Uh, but I tell you, I need a smart woman. I need a smart woman. S intelligence is so sexy. Like, you ask someone out because you're attracted to them. You stay with them because they're smart, funny, and loyal. That's just how it goes. It's a perfect balance. Thank you. A yeah. couple of happy marriages in here. Cool. <laughs> but I, I broke up with a girl because she was either the worst liar ever or not altogether upstairs. <laughs> We're going to talk about it. It was a weird story. I was on a double date. It was me and her, her sister, and her fiance. The four of us were going out. And I'll tell you, super attractive. I wanted this date to go well. I really did. And it did not. Um, after dinner, my date says, hey, let's all go out for ice cream. And I was like, great, ice cream's fun, let's go. So we get to the ice cream parlor, and I'm just being a gentleman. I was like, what, uh, what's your favorite flavor? What do you want to get? She's like, oh, none for me, I'm allergic. <laughs> you, you're, this was your idea. You wanted to come here. This, why would you bring us to your death trap? Why are we here? And she's like, well, my sister loves it. And I want everyone to just have a good time. I was like, okay, cool. But I was split. Like, you know, gentleman Paul, don't get any ice cream. That would be rude. You don't want to eat in front of her. Cool. Horny bachelor side of Paul was like, don't get any ice cream. You don't want that on your lips. If you want to kiss her, that could be an allergic reaction. Let's be safe. So full Paul, no ice cream. I am, I am not getting any ice cream. So we, so we sit down. We wait, they order their ice creams, they sit down. The second her sister's ice cream hits the table, she's like, ooh, cookies and cream, and grabs a huge bite. And I'm like, what just happened? Am I the worst date ever? Is she trying to kill herself while on the date with me? She's just like, end it now! Was she expecting some sort of act of chivalry, like I'm gonna hit the spoon? No, you're allergic. Because that did not happen. And I called her, I was like, hey, what, what just, what happened? You said you were allergic. Why are you eating ice cream? She's like, oh, I'm just kind of allergic. No, 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 no. This is where Paul has a problem. He is not letting this slide. And I said, no, you can't just be kind of allergic to something. No one goes to Red Lobster that's allergic to shrimp thinking, mm, only three or four for me. I don't want to shut off the esophagus completely. <laughs> that does not happen, okay? And I asked her, I was like, why do you, why do you think you're kind of allergic? She's like, well, when I eat too much of it, I just don't feel very good. <laughs> Lady, that's called being full. That's just, that's overeating. That's not an allergy. I could just see her at home just like, oh, I eat a whole quart of ice cream. I feel terrible. I must be allergic. It's the only explanation. <laughs> this never happens with pancakes. <laughs> so we did not go out again. Because apparently I'm allergic to stupid. I can't, I can't. No, I'm not doing that. Nope. But we all, we, all, we all want to find someone cute, right? Everyone wants to find someone cute. Ladies, you're looking for a cute guy, not a creepy guy. I think we can all agree on that. Here's the problem, ladies. It's the same guy. You gotta, you're in for a real disappointment, okay? The problem, guys, is that you got to be careful when you show the creepy, okay? Before you kiss or make out with a woman, you got to back it off just a little bit. 
Because anything you do before making out, creepy. Anything you do after making out, super cute. It's really kind of cool, right? Look, guys, if you haven't made out with her yet, maybe when you follow her on Instagram, don't like every picture from like six months. That's kind of creepy. Don't do that. Or text her constantly. She'll be like, oh, Megan, he won't stop liking my posts. And he keeps texting, he's kind of creepy. After you make out, oh my gosh, Megan, he keeps liking my posts and he texts all the time. Oh, he's so cute. Do you see the difference? Do you see? There's just a subtle difference, right? Guys, if you haven't made out with her yet, don't show up at her work with lunch unannounced. That's kind of creepy, right? She'll be like, oh, thanks so much for bringing me lunch to my work. I didn't tell you where I work. That's kind of, that's kind of creepy. Right? After you make out with her, oh my gosh, she brought me lunch. I didn't even have to tell you. Must have found her on Instagram. He's so cute. Do you see the difference? There's a difference. Guys, if you haven't made out with her, don't park outside of her house if she says she can't hang out and just wait for her to come home just so you can catch a glimpse of her. That's kind of creepy. Right? After you make out, still don't do that. That, that one doesn't change. That, that's, that's a guy's move and we, you gotta stop doing it. You gotta, you gotta stop doing it. And women, it's just the opposite. Anything you do before you make out, super cute. Everything you do after, super clingy. You gotta be careful, you gotta just be careful. Before you make out, oh man, she's texting me all the time, it's gonna happen, she's super cute. After, dude, she won't stop texting me, oh my gosh. She's so clingy. <laughs> but some dates are super confusing. Sometimes women send you mixed signals, and you gotta be careful. The most confusing date I ever went on was a third date. It was weird. Uh, I thought things were going well. It was the third date, it was make or break. We hadn't kissed yet, I didn't know what was gonna happen. We went to lunch, and then she said, hey, let's go to the mall, I've got some coupons. And I was like, oh no, worst date idea ever. No guy wants to do this, right? Because coupons just mean two hours at the mall, holding the handbag, you're screwed. But I like this girl, I'm gonna see it through, right? So we go, and she beelines for the one and only Victoria's Secret. And I'm like, whoa, 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 where are we going? She's like, we're going to Victoria's Secret. I got a coupon for free panties. <laughs> what was that now? That, that's, a, that's a thing? That's, that's not a coupon, ladies, okay? A coupon is 50 cents off cereal. That is a golden <laughs> ticket. That, that is different, okay? And we hadn't kissed her, so I didn't want to be creepy. I was like, no, you, you go ahead. Maybe she's expecting me to be like, act like cool about it. I failed that test. Let's go find some panties. Because <laughs> I'd never been in, it'd been college, and I had never been in. I was a man, I didn't know we could go in. I didn't know that was a thing we could do. I mean, I'd stood outside at the Verizon wireless kiosk for hours, sure, sure, who hasn't? I'd, I'd applied four times, they're booked solid. So we get in there, and I tell you, I was ready. I was ready for like the pictures of half-naked women and the soft fabrics. I was not ready to see all the other men that were in Victoria's Secret already. I was blown away, I was like, oh my gosh. And they're like, easy new guy, easy, easy, easy. <laughs> this is Victoria's Secret, this is shopping, welcome. And I immediately calmed down, I was like, okay, cool. It was very easy for me to hide my expression. It was very hard for me to hide my erection. That was... <laughs> That was a lot trickier. I just, oh, oh my gosh, this, this place. I'm gonna go find a wall. I'm gonna go find a wall. Oh, this is amazing. You really see her spirit come out in this one. This is, this is amazing. What's that? You want me to come touch something? Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, that feels great. That's hard, soft, that's super soft. That's super, super soft. It's hard smuggling the Eiffel Tower. That's all I'm saying. It's a tough, it's a tough job. And she's just browsing. She's acting like we're at Foot Locker. I'm acting like it's a drug deal that's taking too long. I'm like, we gotta get out of here. I, I shouldn't be in here. My mom knows somehow. I gotta get out of here. And this woman has the nerve to ask me my opinion. I will tell you my opinion. I love everything in this store. How many coupons do you have? Because listen, ladies, you gotta understand, we love lingerie, but we do not care about lingerie. Lingerie is just sex wrapping paper, okay? <laughs> we do not care. You put on whatever you want. If that means sex after, hooray! <laughs> you could have industrial gloves on and just wrap yourselves in newspaper. I'd be like, what is that? Trouble in the Middle East? Who cares? 
You pick whatever you need to pick. <laughs> and so I thought this date was gonna end well. It did not end well. It was, uh, I apparently was in the friend zone and I had no idea. And that was, that was sad. I know, you guys were cheering for me too. <laughs> And I was sad, not because it ended, but because I wanted to go back in. I had broken the seal, I, it, like a Treyu, a never-ending story. I wanted to, I, I'd finally broken through. I wanted to go back. And so I went back by myself. You get very different service if you go alone. Guys, you gotta be careful. They're like, what are you doing here without a woman? Go back to the internet with the rest of your kind. Like, <laughs> they're very rude, they're very rude. So I looked at the situation, I was like, well, you. If you're gonna go to Victoria's Secret, you either have to have a woman or a wedding ring, right? Because if you have a wedding ring, that implies that you're there for sincere purposes. And I didn't have a girlfriend, so I just went out and bought a wedding ring. I just figured, <laughs> oh, there it is. Bam! I call this my Victoria's Secret VIP pass. I just flash this and I, the service is back. Hello, lady, she's doing well, I know. Another birthday, so soon. Oh, man. Nothing today, just browsing. Just, just browsing. You're all taking this a little too seriously, and that's okay. I will take this off, so. Not to offend. That's a really awkward purchase if you're not getting married, though. They ask questions you're not ready to answer. Like, oh, cool, you're getting married. What's her name? Ah, uh, Victoria. Uh, <laughs> how did you meet? Mm, the mall. Uh, we met at the mall. Oh, that's so cute. Can we just hurry this purchase up, please? <laughs> Listen, you gotta do what you gotta do in the jungle out there. Dating is a jungle. Especially in your 30s, you gotta online date. Ooh, not fun. Match.com needs to shut up. <laughs> Just be what you are, settle.com. We know why we're here, okay? We're all in this together. The first round draft picks are gone. They're long gone, okay? And we are all in this together, okay? This is the used car lot of love. Let's just figure it out, okay? I'm on there too. No judgment, no judgment, but I know what I'm about, okay? And this is how I know that it's Settle.com. This is how I know. I did my little profile and said a bunch of things that are mm, kind of true about me. And then I grabbed the best picture of me possible and I threw it out onto the internet. And within 30 seconds, Match.com came back with 47 100% matches. Bullshit. <laughs> there is no way that 47 perfect women have just been wandering the streets and I missed them all but you presented them in alphabetical order. I do not believe that for a second. <laughs> Feels more like you got an email from my mom saying, come on, let's move this along. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> and this is how I know that it's not match.com, it's subtle.com. They didn't even listen to me at all. That list of women had things that I was not interested in at all. That list had smokers and hikers and redheads. It was not a 100% list. It was not, they're not deal breakers, but it's not a 100% list. Okay, you got really touchy on that one, okay. Paul, how could you? But I will, I do have one request, ladies. I have one request. Please stop putting boating as one of your favorite activities. You gotta, you gotta stop doing that, okay? <laughs> boating is not an activity. <laughs> Boating's a lifestyle, okay? It requires a boat, and if I had one, I wouldn't be online looking for love, okay? <laughs> I'd be at a lake with a lady right now instead of at 1.30 talking about your cats, okay? <laughs> you're lucky I can pay for the Jeep. You're lucky that I can do that much. Oh, you're looking for a guy that's into boating? That's amazing. I'm looking for a woman who's into country club golfing and private aviation. Where are you, princess? She's in Bountiful with two kids already. I've checked, I know, I know where she is. <laughs> she is indeed, all right. It's the worst. Tinder, there's no pride on Tinder. There is no pride at all. I'll tell you the. The thing you're worried about Tinder is getting catfished. And online dating in general. You don't want to get catfished. Everyone's worried it's not the right person. And I've never been catfished, ever. I have, however, been Tinder time machined. Have you, do you know what this is? <laughs> Two people. It's where they are who they say they are, but all of their pictures are from like eight years ago in a forgotten era of fitness and self-esteem. <laughs> you're in a time warp, my friend, okay? 
I'll tell you, this is the worst, this is my worst Tinder story. So it was one day, I, I matched with two women on the same day. I was having a good day. All right? And one was blonde and one was brunette. And I didn't know what to do. I was torn. Which one do I pick? Which one do I pick? Blondes have more fun, brunettes get it done. I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. But the, the brunette was being super assertive. She was, she was texting me. She's like, hey, come over. We can Redbox or Netflix, whatever you want tonight. And I was like, oh my gosh, I am getting catfished. I was like scared. I was nervous. I didn't know what to do, but she was hot. So I got to see this through, right? So I'm texting her back and she sends me her address. And now suddenly it's real. And I kind of panic for a second. I was like, oh my gosh, I have no idea who this person is. And I honestly empathized with women. Like when you get lined up with a man, is this how you feel all the time? I, I thought I was going to die. I didn't know <laughs> what I was going to do. I was in a very vulnerable state. I told my roommate where I was going. I sent the address to him. <laughs> I left my wallet at home. I took my driver's license. And I duct taped it inside my leg. <laughs> This body's gonna be found with ID on it. This body, this body's gonna be found with ID. Hopefully I don't get pulled over. That's gonna be hard. <laughs> so I'm freaking out and I get to her house and I'm just like, all right, here we go. And I knock on the door and she opens it and I was just like, ooh, time machined. <laughs> Cause it was her, but she had let herself go. It was, it was, it was bad. It was, Oh you're, on, oh, you're on her side now? She got me there under false pretense, but I'm the, I'm the bad guy? Because <laughs> listen, I love curves. I'm all about the curves. Cute and curves. You can ask my friends in browser history. I'm all about the curves. But if you're going to have curves, you got to keep the guardrails up. That's just safe driving. That is safe driving. But I was stuck. You're all asking, Paul, what did you do? How did you get out of there? What can I do? It's not like I can just moonwalk out of there. Oh, this is not Pizza Hut carry up. Oh, no. Oh, this is the wrong address. <laughs> so what did I do? I stayed and made out with her. <laughs> I'm a man who believes that there's consequences for his actions. <laughs> I had flown too close to the sun and I needed to learn a lesson. <laughs> but I tell you, peeling that duct tape off was painful. It was, it was painful. It was painful. <laughs> oh, man. But it's gotten to the point I don't even know when women are into me. I don't even understand when they're hitting on me, when they're not. I miss signals all the time. Worst one ever, I was at the grocery store with my roommate. We were getting stuff for a video game night. Rock stars, cookie dough, Doritos, we're ready. And a very attractive woman was behind us. She's getting puppy chow. She sees what we're buying and she's like, oh my gosh, video game night? And I was like, oh yeah, you must have a man or a brother with a similar problem. She's like, oh, I don't got a man, but I love video games and I missed it. I tell you, I missed it. I was just like, oh, why can't more women be like you? Have a good night. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an idiot, I know. We get out of the store, my roommate's like, Paul, what is wrong with you? She was totally into you. I was like, she wasn't into me, she was buying puppy chow. He's like, Paul, she said she doesn't have a man and likes video games. There's no way both of those are true. I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. So I went back in, too late, she was gone, feeding a puppy somewhere. And that puppy could have been mine. <laughs> I missed it. But now I'm always on guard. I'm at the gym working out, and some woman will come up to me. Hey, you gonna be done with that machine anytime soon? Oh, I read you, baby. <laughs> you give me your number, I'll let you know when I'm done with the machine. She just walked away. She just ignored me completely. I don't understand what's going on. It could be happening in this room right here, right now. I'm completely oblivious. Sure, she's sitting next to a guy, but she's been staring at me the whole time. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. He could be friend zoned. He could be gay. Why do I think he's gay? He's been staring at me too. <laughs> I will leave you with this before I get out of here. I do miss being in a relationship. Relationships are fun. Relationships are great. I miss being able to say those cute pet names that you say to each other. Babe, sweetie, honey. Oh, so much fun, right? One woman took it a little too far though. Uh, we were going out and she's like, you ready for tonight? I was like, I absolutely am, babe. Where do you want to go? And she says, did you call your last girlfriend, babe? Because if you did, I don't want to be babe. <laughs> no, you're the first. You are the first. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I, I, I've definitely said babe before. And she's like, well, you got to figure something out. Pick something else. That's women's favorite thing. Think of something. <laughs> Ladies, you're in for a disappointment. Because <laughs> we're not going to think of anything. <laughs>
But I tried, I tried. I wrote things down. She came over the next day. I was like, hey, Pop-Tart. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing? I said, nothing, my little toaster strudel. <laughs> She's like, stop that. I was like, well, I got that. I got pancake batter. I've got Traeger of my heart. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Most of these are food-based. <laughs> and she got frustrated. She's like, just call me Honeysuckle. <laughs> honeysuckle? Did your last boyfriend call you that? Because if he did, not a chance. <laughs> But uh, the, the deeper the relationship goes, the better it is. And you know you're in a great relationship when you start having those deep, meaningful talks about distribution of labor. That is when <laughs> you know you're in for the real thing. When you start dividing chores, that is when you know you're in it together, right? The chore swap, as I like to call it. The chore swap is amazing. <laughs> my parents have an amazing chore swap. My mom did the laundry. My mom was in charge of doing the laundry. And my dad was in charge of making me do everything else. It was amazing, <laughs> the distribution of labor. It was so great. And this, this woman that I was in a relationship with, and she finally broke down. She told me, she's like, Paul, you need to know something about me. I don't do dishes. And I was like, you don't, you don't do dishes? She's like, no, I can't do them anymore. Sure, my mom did them when I was a baby, but one day she just started making me do them. And I've been doing them every day since. And I can't, I'm done. And I could tell it meant a lot to her. I was like, Babe, Pop-Tart, I got you. I'm on this. I will do the dishes for the rest of your life. You will never touch a dish ever again. Because that's what it's about. Compromise, love, trust, helping each other out. And she was touched, I could tell. She meant a lot to her. She's like, this is the sweetest thing anyone has ever said to me. What can I do for you? What can I take off of your load? What can I do to help you out? And I said, that's easy. I'm tired of wiping my own ass. <laughs> My mom did it for me when I was a baby. And then one day she just started making me do it. And I've been doing it every day since. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really Thank you.